know you're asking today, how long will it take? Somebody's asking, how long will prejudice blind the visions of men? I come to say to you this afternoon, however difficult the moment, yes, sir. however frustrating the hour, it will not be long no, because truth crusher will rise again. Yes, sir. How long, not long. Yes, sir. Because no lie can live forever. Yes, sir. How long? Not long. Yes, sir. Because you shall reap what you sow. Yes, sir. How long? Yes, sir. Not long. How long? Do forever on the scaffold, long yes, forever on the throne. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That scaffold sways the future. Yes, Behind the dim unknown standeth God within the shadow, keeping watch above his own. How long? Not long. Because the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. How long? Not long. Because mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He's trapping out the biggest where the face of man to sword. He's loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. He has sounded forth the trumpet. That shall never call retreat. He is shifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. That's all oh, be swift, my soul. Stand for him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Glory, hallelujah. That's the Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. On behalf of the NAACP main initiatives, the 20 members of the Martin Luther King Steering Committee and the 28 session host, we hope that you have enjoyed our virtual day together as we now close the 40th anniversary of the Martin Luther King Jr. Holiday Observance. This celebration began in the most simple but most powerful of ways with a handful of leaders from Portland's black community gathering in the kitchen of Leonard and Mary Jane Cummings for breakfast. These organizers, leaders, now our elders, used the opportunity to strengthen relationships, engage on the critical issues, strategize, and publicly call for action. My name is Rachel Talbot Ross, and I am proud to join with you today in the celebration of the life and legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. In time, the celebration uh, that was taking place in a, in a kitchen grew into a formal breakfast held at the Holiday Inn by the Bay in which hundreds of Mainers gathered, elected officials spoke, nationally recognized leaders were featured, and a children's program was created. I grew up in the NAACP. I grew up grow going to this breakfast and feeling proud of my community in every which way was possible. It was the only time throughout the entire year as a young girl, I saw and I was able to com communicate with and share bread with people who looked like me. It gave me immense amount of pride. Those leaders, it's important to say their names. Janet Johnson, June McKenzie, Neville Knowles, Steve and Judy Halpert, James Matthews, Gerald and Anita Talbot, Bob Talbot, Sally and Arnold Chandler, Moses Zabunya, Victoria Hershey, Rebecca Hershey, Winston McGill, Shawnee McGill, and Regina Phillips. So many others participated. But these leaders helped make it happen year after year. We honor them today for their service and their resiliency. One of my most treasured 
memories was on January 21st, uh, 2013, when we cut the breakfast program short in order to watch the second inauguration of President Barack Obama via live screen in the ballroom. Being part of such a historic moment was only made better because I was witnessing this moment, this incredible moment with people of all ages and backgrounds. Eventually, this breakfast turned into a dinner and each year the event sold out with over 700 people in attendance. It became the largest and most diverse, truly multi-generational celebration in honor of Dr. King held in all of New England and absolutely held here in Maine. Today, 1,600 people came together in what this year became a virtual honoring of Dr. King's life. I'm gonna say that again. 1,600 people came together today. I believe uh, the, one of the largest, if not the largest events, even virtually held in Dr. King's honor. And we should all be very proud of ourselves. So in the spirit of looking back on this 40 year journey, we know that it is important to use that to actually path, get a pathway forward. I am honored to welcome Mariana Angelo from Black Power, which is Portland organizers working to end racism to help us look towards the future. That will be followed by a musical selection by Janae Sound, a song by Smokey Norfolk called I Need You Now. Mariana, thank you for joining us. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you again, Rachel. Uh, thank you for having Black Power to be a part of something so monumental and something that has shaped me as a young organizer um, in Portland growing up. I just wanna say thank you for all the work that you've done, all the work your family has done. Um, I have not been able to be around all those amazing people, um, probably because I was like, way too young to understand. Um, but I'm just so happy that Maine is fortunate enough um, to have you here and to have you as somebody that we can look up to, somebody that we can um, speak to, somebody that we can follow and learn from. Um, I just wanna add some sentiments that we at Black Power um, have felt that is very necessary um, for the Black folks that are watching in on today. Um, it's unfortunate that we are unable to all be together in this space and to hold each other and to mourn um, and to really understand what our Blackness is and how we can use that as a way to fight for our liberation. But this is for all of you that are watching to say that we are light and love that has been manifested into who we are. We are the keepers that we have been waiting for. We are the love and light that has manifested itself and transformed and transcended through decades of brutalization. We have survived unspeakable pain, unprecedented criminalization, and we have still become our keepers. Justice and freedom are the shadows that chase us in the night, invade our every move and thought, while we try to capture what is their true essence? What is freedom? What is justice? And what does that look like for us? We wanna bathe in the sun of equality without being burned by the stark reality that we may not see that in our lifetime, but we are the revolution and we lead with our ancestors in tow. We lead with the leaders in Maine in tow. We lead with the voices of all those that have been buried in the soil of this country before us. We walk in the path of many, Fanny Lou Hamer, Marcus Garvey, Fred Hampton, and all the voices that have been heard and forgotten, but we still hear those voices. The diaspora still hears you. And someday our chains will not drag in the soil and create a silhouette of what our life could be. And we could truly understand what bathing in the sun of freedom truly feels like. The diaspora must find ways to heal the long lasting impacts of white supremacy on our communities. And in the ways that whiteness has desired to separate our shared experiences and our blackness. Whiteness has broken our bond and our tribes, but we cannot afford these stripes within our community. We cannot afford the cloak of whiteness to shift us any longer. 
And that's why we think the legacy of MLK and the legacy that he has given to us and activists like myself can continue the fight. Our own personal call to action is for your blackness to be asserted in every space, for the black folks to show fully as themselves and take what you want and not when you have to ask. For us to take accountability for ourselves and how we show up in our own communities. We want white folks to take accountability for how they show up into their communities and really look into our future and what we want our future to be. I see our future as bound, bountiful and having activists of all different ages and having truly MLK's legacy permeate throughout our communities. What we want in the future is for our future to look like us, for our future to feel like us, for our future to feel like our communities on Sunday afternoons. I want our future to feel like we are at home and that we have done the work and we have done everything that we can in this life. And so Black Power, we employ everybody to really do the necessary work that they must do for the future. Thank you. Not another second, another minute, not an hour of another day, but Lord, we need you right away. If we've never needed you before, to show up and restore all the faith that I let see. While we were yet searching the world for more love and strength, you are in me. You're our best friend. I know in me I stretch my hands to be. Come rescue me. I need you right away. The agony of being alone, the fear of doing things on my own, the tests and trials that come to me, the feelings of guilt, hurt, shame, and defeat, the waves of trials that beat upon me, but to know that any we've got victory. We need you now, Lord, we need you now. We need you right now, right now, right now. We need you now. Not another second or another minute. Not an hour of another day. But Lord, we need you right away. Oh, thank you, Janae Sound. Thank you, Mariana. Thank you, Black Power. You know, we, uh, we started the day with a video clip of Dr. King, as we have done so far for over a decade, uh, making sure that his was the very first voice in the room, giving power to his voice in the room. 
But the beauty of today was in hearing from what Dr. King would have called the beloved community. It was very incredibly poignant to hear all of your voices. And as you watched and engaged and hopefully participated, uh, learned something that will stay with you uh, far longer than today. We're hoping that you made a critical connection with an individual or an organization. Maybe you came to better understand the demands of the Poor People's Campaign or chose to uh, support the work of equity and justice taking place at the municipal level. We're hoping that you can now provide testimony at public hearings at the Maine State Legislature or in your town offices, uh, that you will check out the book by Zarita Hammond on culturally responsive teaching and the brain. We truly hope that today was a day of learning and growing and communicating and being together with one another as Dr. King would have hoped. We'd love for you to check out our website. We're hoping to stay in touch with you throughout the year. Um, we don't need to wait a whole nother year in which to come back together. Uh, you can check out our website for all of the resources today, along with the call for action uh, that came with uh, all of today's sessions. We're also going to post the recordings of each of the sessions, because I know that like uh, you, I, I want to go back and spend more time with, with everyone. Uh, there's also on that website a link to a membership form uh, for a newly reestablished Portland branch of the NAACP. We hope that you found today moving and that you are called to act. As we start to close and listen to the beautiful sounds of Miss Maine Carolyn Brady, I want to just share some final words that were provided by Olivia Moore in the session called Rematriation, a call into community, strengthening Black and Indigenous solidarity that I hope moves you to act. We call on and with the earth to let our communities come into deep reciprocal relationships and let the land teach. And now the Black National Anthem, lift every voice and sing.
The Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing, as performed by Carolyn Brady. Thank you so very much. I want to say once again uh, and express our deep, deep thanks and appreciation to the 20 members of the Martin Luther King Steering Committee, the NAACP in Maine, our session host, and all of our sponsors, with special thanks to Hannaford's, the University of Southern Maine, Allagash, Maine Health, and main initiatives in each and every one of you. I will ask for a little indulgence and would say that if we were together, I think one of our loudest, loudest rounds of applause may be for Andrea Berry from main initiatives for whom this day would have never ever taken place. So if you're with me, please give a round of applause to Andrea Berry for her incredible intellect, her organizing spirit, her patience, her flexibility and downright resiliency in order to make today possible. So we thank you, Andrea Berry, for all that you brought to this today. And we want to end uh, with a really special performance uh, that uh, you can uh, use uh, to meditate, to think, to reflect on today in all ways with a 10 minute musical performance by Kafari in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. We pray that you be safe and that you'll be well. And thank you for joining us on this extraordinary day. God bless you all.
Thank you. 